scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let me challenge someone, therefore, that this is the year you will go back to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy, there are disciplines you have to give yourself. There are videos you must watch. If not, your eyes will not see sleep. Discipline yourself. Tear down some negative pictures in your room that continue to spell evil and war and all of those kinds of things. I am very sensitive to atmosphere. There are things you will never find around me because there are multitudes that are depending on the decisions that I take. And it is my responsibility under God to create the atmosphere that makes creativity and growth possible for me. I invest in my atmosphere. Are you learning? You're staying with neighbors that are causing you trouble. At the end of this meeting, we'll release a grace for you to get out of that place and look for a place where you can, you can roll on the floor in peace and serve God. And anybody who comes under your roof and doesn't behave well, send them away in peace. Don't, don't say, well, the, the Bible says, no, 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 God is not stupid. There is a protocol. Don't bring somebody into your house who does not give you peace. The Bible says, the Lord himself will give you peace always, by all means. There are many believers who continue to trap themselves and they don't create that atmosphere that allows for creativity because they ship all kinds of troublemakers around their lives in the name of relatives in the name of all kinds of people you don't have to fight them let them go in peace if you are under my roof you must serve my god and subscribe to the modus operandi you met you can't bring your rules into my house no are we learning the decision to contend for superior beliefs there are some of you your businesses should not be at that level except that you have not seen further because it is as far as your eyes can see that it is given to you not as far as it is available the one your eyes sees is what you are you are, you are given make up your mind that this is the year you will expand beyond the limitations of culture beyond the limitations don't say I am from so 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 no if you came from a poor family, do not bring a poor family out of you. If you came from a weak family, do not bring a weak family out of you. Be the bridge between the old and the new. I made up my mind it was a decision that every men mental construct I will need to have to allow me excel at a global level. God has done his part by calling me and anointing me and granting me access to the Holy Spirit. There is the labor dimension of faith as a commitment that you believe in what God has called you to do. If he has anointed me to speak to kings and to nations and to nobles, I must pay the price to build the mental capacity that befits that realm. Don't sit down and just wish and hope and wish and hope and wish and hope and then remain mediocre. No. Make up your mind that you will not be in any atmosphere on this earth and feel ashamed. No, it is a commitment. Businessman, that even if you stand before Bill Gates, you will only be inspired, not intimidated. No, no. 
the difference between you and anybody you admire is number one the level and quality of information they have number two the level of relationships that they have that support that mental transition and then number three the level of engracing upon them everybody you ad you admire you can even surpass if you are willing to make the decision to work on your mind your mind can go where your body is not yet qualified to go. Your mind does not need a visa. Your mind can travel with the Holy Spirit and tap into infinite possibilities. I was preparing for ministry when I was in one room. Don't wait for anybody to come and invite you and bless you. From where you are, lift up your eyes. You don't need a visa to lift up your eyes. And now, technology has made it easy with the comfort of your phone, you can access materials that expand your thinking. Lay your hands on your head and declare expansion. That this year, my mind expand, expand. You are praying, my mind expand. In the name of Jesus, expand in ministry, expand in business for the sake of his majesty. A small and a mediocre life. I'm not part of you again. I make a decision in the name of Jesus. Not a carnal decision. Not a sensual decision. A spiritual decision. The discipline to submit my mind to knowledge. The discipline to submit my mind to learning. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. In the name of Jesus. Local champion living. Be far from my life. I am ready to attain a global scale in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You see, if you don't rise to a global scale, you will spend your life in pain and jealousy and comparison. You will never see traffic in the air. There is enough room, no matter how big the plane is. Traffic is only when you are on land. Rise to a level where everyone is a champion. This petty jealousy, petty fighting, petty pointing fingers. There is a realm that you can rise above it. Are you learning? Make that decision today. Apostle, I have only 10,000. You don't need clothes. Go and buy materials. Make up your mind that there is no fake life. Don't fake what can be real. Invest in your mind. I have 10,000, I will not pretend. I know by faith I have everything in Christ. But I will use that 10,000 and buy data and sit down and begin to invest. Lord, I know that the food my mother did not eat in her youth, she will eat it before she sees you. Shalika paru katasia. You buy a notebook and you are writing. And heaven is supervising the things you are doing. Sooner or later, your current level will run away from you. And the new that you are embracing with your transformation will come to you. Can I tell you, success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by your becoming. Your becoming is greater than your doing. Learn this. Business people, learn this. It is not in doing, it is your becoming. The people that do know their God, they shall be, then they shall do. We are focus is on doing. What do I do to prosper? No, it's what do I become? You do from a standpoint of your becoming. Your mindset is greater than your activity. Please do not forget this. Stay and build yourself. Stay and work on yourself. Be strict on yourself. When you watch people who run the 100 meters dash, do you know they don't train them with 100 meters? Go and ask any coach. You can't train somebody to run on 100 meters with 100 meters. You can do 150 or 200. So his mind is already fixed on 150. So that even when he reaches 100, he has to stop himself. The mind says, continue. You were not trained with this small a distance. So stretch yourself. So that even when you have crossed the global scale, your mind is still pushing you. It is when you stand with your contemporaries, you see the excellency of your transformation. Please make up your mind that you will drive shame through diligence. Drive shame far from your life. Number three. Are you learning? 
what is the third decision you must make for an excelling life number three the decision to discover and fulfill your assignment that is the third destiny decision that you must make here the decision to discover and fulfill your assignment let me hurry up so that we conserve time john chapter 4 and verse 34 john 4 and verse 34 jesus said unto them my meat that means my satisfaction comes from doing the will of him that sent me david's christian center and to finish his work Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory will always say that the wealthiest place is not the gold mines in South Africa and Congo, DRC and all of these places, not even the oil mines in Nigeria and the Middle East, that the wealthiest place is the cemetery where dreams were never actualized, books that should have been written that were never written. And his goal was that he would die empty. And even in death, he cheated death. You must make up your mind that this is the year you will stop living a purposeless life. Where someone calls you in the morning and says, Bros, what is for today? Say, I'm just sitting down. And say, can you come? And that, that's what defines your day. Purpose-driven people almost need prayer to sleep. Because there is something consuming them. There's no distraction. Many of you got into trouble because of idleness. There is a way you can be so busy, even the devil will wait for you. Because your level of focus and determination is such that nothing will bend your focus. Vision gives your life focus. You are busy but not doing many things. Very busy. If you find yourself doing many things, it's a sign that you've not found your place in life. You should be busy, but not doing many things. Are you learning? John chapter 9 and verse 4. John chapter 9 and verse 4. Jesus said unto them, He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. Look up please. There is timing to your assignment. Not every time is convenient. Imagine a man who discovers purpose at 80. Chances are excellent that that man may not do so much because the energy, the relationships, his colleagues may have been long dead. So all the things that support his feeling, his assignment are almost not there. The night cometh when no man can walk again. Today we are seated here because Pastor Kingsley and his dear wife found their place in God's agenda. And we are all recipients and beneficiaries of their purposefulness. Make up your mind that you are not going to go and see him without giving out what he put within you to your generation. It was a decision that I made many years ago. And I'm grateful to God that I made that decision. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book 10:7. Hebrews 10, 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Someone after this, after the church conference, you should go and start your own retreat. Your own three-day retreat. Lock yourself somewhere and flog it out with destiny. Someone calls you and tell them, please call me after three days. There's something I need to sort. Lord, I'm tired of escorting people. I'm tired of acting like I know where I'm going. Because you see, your honor is in the discovery of your place. A bird does not struggle in the air. But if the bird enters sea, it will struggle there. Many of you, you are struggling as though God did not call and anoint and bless you. Because you have not found your place. The decision to discover and fulfill your assignment. I made up my mind that I was not going to spend my life doing so many things. That which God has called me to do, I will do with all my heart. Hallelujah. All my days on earth 
I will await the moment that I see you face to face. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Listen, your honor is in your call. Your prosperity is in your call. Your relevance is in your call. Brother, sister, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. This is not just a preacher speaking. You will live your life in jealousy and pain and anger. This man was my classmate. This one was this. So what? He was just lucky. When you find your place, you can celebrate others because there is security in your place. When you see people who are always pointing fingers and always speaking negatively to others, such well, they are gallivanting around the corridors of destiny. They have not found them their place. When you see others who celebrate people and can appreciate it, it's because they have found security in their place. And let me tell you this. Destiny is like a relay. That means... If God desired that I run with my purpose and hand it to this man and he hands it to this man, that means if I refuse to leave purpose, I'm punishing these people. God is too merciful to allow them suffer for my carelessness. He will put a replacement to do that work. This is what is happening to many people. You can look at someone and say, but this is my assignment. Another person had to take it because for every time you delay, there are multitudes suffering. And God loves you, but he loves them too. He will not submit people in pain because you have refused to rise. If I did not rise as a man of God, God loves me, but he will have to raise somebody who will bridge it. The refusal to discover and find your place can cost you your bishopric. He said, his bishopric let another take. Ah, God, don't replace me. I'm ever available. Ever available. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift do not live the kind of life where you see someone doing what you know this is your assignment when God finds out that you are careless over your assignment, he will look for someone who is faithfully doing his and has increased capacity. He will honor him and add your assignment to him. This is why you find out that some people start ministry and life not intending to do certain things, but because God searches for available vessels and they are not there, he comes to them and says, can I add this to you? I have seen that your stamina can take this. And you say, Lord, I love you. Bring it on. He will multiply their honor and still grant them that grace. Someone can start the ministry as an evangelist. But the prophet that God desired to raise is careless, not serious. When he should be born again, he's not born again. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he's still arguing about the Holy Spirit. When will you start prophesying to people? God will raise that evangelist who is available. The evangelist is going through the discipline of a prophet. God will add that prophetic to that man. You find out for five years he started with evangelism. But right now he has switched even to the prophetic because God intends for his agenda to advance. And if you become an interruption to his agenda, believe me, he loves you, but he will find the replacement. This is one thing I know about God. When you know you will be serious with God, there is nobody who is indispensable. No, sir. No, sir. Don't say God lacks men. There are men who... Don't make the mistake of Elijah to say I'm the only one. There are 7,000 others. 
David Christian Center, if God has given you the privilege to be a head of department, to lead a unit, do not ever let it get to you that I am the only one. It is just by meritocracy. No, sir. Because God can pick ordinary people and place something on their lives and grant them the grace to excel. Are we learning? Very quickly. The next decision that you have to make is the decision to be healthy and to be physically strong. You will think this is a simple decision till you die. Decision to be healthy and to be physically strong. Many of you who have listened to my teachings, you've heard me make a confession there. Pastor, that a time came during my retreat, usually I examined myself against these benchmarks. And for three years in a row, I found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health. I was preaching the gospel, healing the sick, casting out demons. But the Lord began to caution me. If you need to live long, make sure you pay attention to this body. And I made up my mind that every time I see death in the pot, I drive it away. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 19 and 20, just write for reference, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, that your body does not belong to you, he says. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And he says to glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Carelessness over your health is sin. It took a lot for that body to arrive. Remember, it took a lot for that body to arrive. The moment you are careless with your body, just look at a barren woman who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Then you respect the gift of a body that God gave you. Let me tell you this. Based on the law of territory, the only legitimate access you have to this realm is when you have a body. No matter what is, what is fine with your spirit, if there is no body, you cannot function here. So Satan's assignment among the many strategies to destroy you is to cause your body to so deteriorate that your spirit can no longer exist there. Then it will leave. That's why God anointed doctors. That's why God gave the healing anointing. These are all efforts to preserve your body. Make that decision. Don't be careless with your body. Don't be careless with your health. Pay attention to it for the sake of the destinies that depend on you. Why are demon spirits illegal on earth? Because they don't have bodies. Even the Son of God as the Word, when he needed to come into this domain, the Holy Ghost had to walk carefully with a woman. If Mary refused to donate her womb, he would have had to go to another virgin to now talk to her. The same thing Zechariah asked was the same thing Mary asked. God punished Zechariah and left Mary. Mary said, how shall these things be? You thought you would now say, okay, you are joking with me. He had to explain the power of the highest will come on you and then you will now be pregnant and that which will come from you and all of that and she now said be it unto me that's how jesus arrived every time you are tempted to be careless with your body think of a family trusting god for the gift of a child then you will know that the body is a very expensive thing if you lose it another one cannot come i Science has not perfected transferring spirits from one body to the other. I'm not sure that has been done. That a dead healthy body, they now look for a, 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 an alive person who is almost dying and now transfer the spirits. So I want you to make up your mind that you will be healthy. There are many people, 25, 30, 35, you see them and you say, guess, and people say 51. You say, God, God forbid. How can you say I'm 51? Old, wrinkled, talking, you are not clear, you are not smart, you are not alive. You go for a job interview, they tell you to go out because they suspect you are already. No, no, no. Make up your mind. That in the name of Jesus, I will be healthy. Say it. Say in the name of Jesus, 
I make a decision that I will be healthy. That I will be healthy. Go and study about it. There are many of you who have heard. Many of you who have heard. Nutritionists, nutritionists, health people, organic people, go and buy the truth. 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 Expert in that area with results. What is making you? I am you are older than me, but you are looking fresher than me. What is the secret? And he says, Sit down, take notes, and go and do likewise. Please be healthy. Do you know, especially for those of us who are men of God, statistics has shown that most men of God who work in the apostolic, the prophetic, the ministry of signs and wonders, they almost don't cross 80. Because there is something the anointing does to your physical body. You know that? By the time you stand under, it's like holding a high tension wire for a long time, every day for a long time. Your body, there is a skill to preserving the health of that body under the influence of intense glory. Most of us just keep receiving it. a way of interpreting prosperity just because you suffered growing up you suffered things did not work you knocked on doors they didn't open when there is a psychological revenge mission so you get back and believe by punishing yourself like that you are appeasing your past hallelujah and then some of us, the discipline to see food and leave it. Do you know, listen, do you know gluttony is a spirit? Anything you have must finish before you rest. It's a spirit. You can discipline yourself. Believe me when I tell you this. You can't do much with God and with destiny if you don't have control over food. As great people. Most people hate January because usually most, whether in your prayer group or in a church, there's some kind of fasting. There are people who don't have personal fasts in a month. Ah! In Africa, please repent. Please repent in the name of Jesus. You need strength and capacity. Especially if you're a man of God here, you're a priest, you're a father. The Bible gives us a medical advice that if you don't plan to walk, don't eat. It's an advice. He who does not walk should not eat. It's an advice that the moment you keep piling food without walking, you are dying. So go back home and discipline yourself and trust God for grace. Many Africans are already dead while they walk. We have to trust God to live a long time. I don't know about you, but no devil would take my life before my time. The fullness of my days I will fulfill. Are you in agreement with me? I pray over everyone here at David's Christian Center. The spirits that caught men, caught short their lives and their destinies. May it be far from you in Jesus' name. Please sit down. Let me five minutes and let's finish these decisions and I speak over your life. Number five. What is the fifth decision? If you've been sleeping, wake up. The decision to be financially independent. Uh-huh. The fifth decision that you must make is a commitment that I must, I must sort this issue of lack and want and financial struggles this is not just bowing down to the flesh this is not just some carnal pursuit for money remember we are kingdom people and everything we deal with is with respect to our desire to see jesus glorified and to see him revealed can i tell you this dear brothers and sisters people of god do not let anyone downplay the necessity of supplies 
in your actualizing destiny. You reject this truth, you will spend your life paying the price. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. Who would know that this kind of scripture will be in the Bible? Read it with me, please, if you're a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. That the rich rule it over the poor. That means being poor has a dangerous side effect. And it says the borrower is servant to the lender. If you are an intelligent person and you want a servant, how do you make that servant in this scripture? Make the best a borrower. Africa, you see it now? Nigeria, you see it now? That whoever is a borrower must also be a servant. So instead of calling you a servant, I create an economic name and I call you a Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13. Don't forget this story for the rest of your life. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13. Please look up. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Next verse, please. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it. Next verse, please help me read. One, two, read. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. What a description. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Uh -huh. Yet, no man remembered the same poor man. The story concludes with this. Go back to verse 16 now. Not 13, you took us back. Then said I, read with me now. Wisdom is better than strength. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. That a man by his wisdom saved a land and they swept him under a carpet. Economic empowerment is part of the dominion pillars. You cannot truly walk in dominion until there is dominion in terms of finances now there are people who have taught this from a carnal standpoint and they continue to fuel lust in people and make people you lie down on people's cars lie down on their compound snap in front of their gates that's not how to be prosperous but can i tell you one of the decisions you must make up your mind to do is to wave poverty goodbye and insist that it waves you back There are many temptations that are not necessary when God has helped you. Are we in agreement? Yes, sir. Lack and want can drive you to do things you never believed you would do. Believe me. I believe that it is a prayer point in the heart of your man of God and his dear wife to see a church every leader who loves God and loves the people given to him among the many things you seek to see captured in their lives and their Christian experience a life of economic dignity a life of economic dignity a life of economic dignity imagine that I came here now and I'm thinking of some bills to pay and all of that and God has given me the prophetic and I can see your account number what do you think is going to happen I will easily yield to that temptation and say, Mr. I'm looking at 100 million. Don't act like it's not there. I will call the account number and tell you, look, just respect yourself. The God who showed me that thing. And God is saying, me, I gave you this as a gift. Prosperity is a weapon. It can shield you from many things. Many things. Many things. And at the end of this service, I'm going to be speaking over your life. That in the name of Jesus this year, even when men say there is a casting down, you will prosper in a way that you want to run away from your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many things that are not prayer points. They just need supplies. One of my, one of my dear sons in the ministry will say that prosperity will reduce 
your, your prayer request and increase your prayer life. That means you spend time praying, but most of your prayer will be worship and praying in the spirit. There are people who go to pray and for six hours they've not started praying in tongues yet because of the way the needs are plenty. At the end of it, there is no edification because you've strangled the part of prayer that is made for edification at the altar of your needs. I made a decision years ago that I will never be poor. This is not a carnal man's declaration. I have studied poverty carefully and I've seen what it can do to a glorious destiny. I don't know if you make up your mind to like it, but let me counsel you. Remember, our teaching here is choose life. Don't hope that you will be blessed. You must make that decision this night that I'm tired of this thing. I'm tired of this. The last one, and then we'll pray. What is the last decision? The last decision you must make is the decision to build quality destiny relationships. The decision to build quality destiny relationships. Listen to me. The command be fruitful means be relational. The only way to be fruitful is by relationships. It takes a husband and his wife to have a child. Is that true? Agriculture, biology teaches us that there is no relationship. There is no fruitfulness outside of relationships. There are many currencies that we were given to buy our possibilities in this realm. One of the hard currencies is relationships. There are seven of them. The cheapest and the weakest currency is naira and dollars and pounds. If that is the only thing you have in your account to buy things, you are really poor. I always pray for my people that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. Can I tell you this? Relationship is profound wealth. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But don't joke with who likes you. Oh king, you love Hadassah, she becomes queen immediately. The king hated the baker in three days he died. It was not God that killed him. Who hates you may not be an issue, but who likes you? Listen, this is where many believers do not understand the power of relationships. Our loved ones and the elderly have taught us the power, the economic, spiritual, sociological value of relationships. As I conclude, let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in your life today who thinks you are such a big deal that you can call upon and you can guarantee that the person will respond to you? Is there someone today, if you are in a financial need, you can call him and say sincerely, this is my house rent, and he says, over my dead body, not when I'm with you. Can I tell you, you are sitting on a time bomb if there is no such person in your life. Believe me when I tell you, dear people of God, is there someone who you can wake by 2 a.m. and is not embarrassed? He says, if it's for you, I can go that far. Many of us keep running alone. I have the Holy Ghost. Yes, you are right. But you have to understand that the way God works is that all blessings come from God through men to men. Don't forget this. All blessings come from God through men to men. If God says yes and the middle man says no, the yes remains in the realm of the spirit while you suffer on earth. I have learned the value of quality destiny relationships. Nobody in this church under this high level unction should be without quality relationships because your man of God and the woman of God, this is, this is one of the core areas of grace. They've taught you things. Many of you get cheaply what other people pay for to learn. Don't abuse it because it came free. Listen to this word of caution I tell you. I said this to your pastor yesterday 
I also said it to the woman of God. Chances are excellent that when something is very available, you can cheapen it. Learn to protect and preserve the wisdom that comes from these people. They are gifts not only to you, but to the body of Christ. Are you, are you following now? Please learn relationships. Relationships are investments. Next time they ask you to list all your investments, don't list land alone. Land does not talk to you. Land cannot love you. Land cannot move from where it is to where trouble is meeting you. But there are men who can move. That there must be someone in your life who says, provided I am alive, your children will never beg for bread. There are people who relationship is a stream of income for them. There are preachers who are alone. Aside from God, there is no human vessel who believes in you enough. No. I love everybody, but I don't commit the same level of energy and vigor to everybody. There are people who have taken out time to invest in my relationship with them, people, families. I would be stupid and even foolish to generalize relationship and invest the same kind of energy. Go back and stratify your relationships. Who are the top five people who have shown you honor in your life? Don't you treat them the same way with everyone. No. I love everybody sincerely. But not everybody means the same thing to me as far as relationship is concerned. There are people who will never see you cry except they are not alive. There are people who will never see you hungry Please, let me tell you this. When you find people in your life who love you to stretch that far, I want you to take note of them and invest into that relationship. It's one of the lessons that I learned having the privilege of access to our fathers of faith in this nation. My goodness, my God. There are a few relationships those people have in their life that are almost magnetic. They, they form me, they of their destiny relationships is unbendable there are some of you God forbid if your house gets burnt you will sit down outside because there is nobody who loves you enough to say I can't let your children cry you don't have to get everything by working for it yourself relationships are a leverage tap into it there are two keys to relationships among the many that you will learn Number one is honor. You can't dishonor people and expect them to be indefinitely committed to you. No. Honor is the ability to discern, celebrate, and reward people for their uniqueness. Don't trivialize people and expect commitment from them. Don't trivialize your pastor and the woman of God and expect them to continue investing. If you ask your pastor and ask the woman of God, they love everybody you are all their children spiritually and they have been committed to you but let me tell you sincerely how you know you are special is when your absence means a lot to the people if your absence does not mean anything it means your presence is not adding much there are people if they don't come to church on sunday more than 50 people will call them what happened you are too significant to be ignored there are others it's after two months somebody will say where is that noisy person who doesn't listen as soon as they say make up your mind that you will be a blessing to someone don't come to church and ignore people or don't wait until you see people who have a a a persona that communicates wealth then you now respect them because you saw the designers you saw the shoes and the watch Someone who will be sitting close to you who can buy anything you think about can just be as simple as possible. And they say, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, may God bless you or I need you. You don't know that's your job. You are supposed to just turn and say, I need you. And the person will say, see me tomorrow. But pride for nothing can make you close the remaining 10 years of your life. I want to speak over your life. Listen to me. These are truths that have come to you from heaven to change your life. The decision to invest in quality relationships. Write it down. Who are the 10 most important people in my life 
that I need to truly commit to. You love everybody, but who are they? Who are they? Who are they? Who are the people that love me sincerely and truthfully? Not just for what they will get. People who will cry with you. There are four kinds of men you will need in your life. Let me take one minute to share this with you. Number one, you need divine connectors. Divine connectors do not have what you are looking for, but they know who has it. You need them. The key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment. Because most times they do not come in a form that is desirable. For instance, the slave girl and Naaman. If Naaman ignored her and said you are a dirty slave girl, he would have remained leprous for the rest of his life. Pay attention to divine connectors. They may look weak. They may look unintelligent. They may not seem to fit your status. But they carry something, a road map that can lead you. The slave girl could not heal Elisha. But she could point him to the prophet who could heal him. When you enter the bus tomorrow, don't laugh at the conductor. Look at the poster he's holding. It may be a business seminar that answers your prayer. Divine connectors do not even know they are divine connectors. Number two, you need in your life men of influence. They are called gatekeepers. They are the ones who control systems and structures. You need their credibility and you need their endorsement. There are times, oh Joseph, you have the power to interpret the dreams, but you do not have access to the king's palace. You will need to depend on who is already in the palace to speak for you. These are the wisdom keys that believers do not know. Can I tell you this? It matters who speaks good of you at the gates. You must trust God that he positions you. One person's signature can be the leverage that lifts you. Many years ago when I was in Zaria, there was a, a, a very popular story. Someone who wanted to go to um, NDA and they said the person was too short and they could not take him. So he went to the then Emir who was alive and reported it and said they refused to take me that they said the height requirement, I didn't meet it. The Emir said, go back to the commandant and tell him the Emir has added your height. Say relationships. That's right. Is there someone who can walk in partnership with the Holy Ghost to add your height? Every rule on earth was put by man. Under a certain condition, it can bend. There are positive compromises that happen at the instance of relationships. Number three, you need gifted people in your life. You don't just need loyal people, you need results. And there are times you need gifted people. Gifted people. There are corporations today who are spending millions of naira and dollars servicing people who are not gifted. The best corporations in the world have mastered the art of piecing together gifted people. And then number four, you need burden bearers. The fourth kind of people you need in your life. Burden bearers do not have the power to move you forward, but they are the ones who stop you from going back. You need such people. Woe betide any man and any leader who does not have a burden bearer in the day of adversity. When Jesus was on the cross, even though so many people ran away, there were a few people who stood. His mother and John. Many leaders today die of heart attack. They die of neglect and pain because they feel they invested into so many people and at their down times in life, there was no one to stand with them. Pray for these four groups of people. Every time you are praying that God should connect you to the ministry of men, among others, these are the four classes of people you should cry for. Divine connectors, men of influence, gifted people, and burden bearers. Jesus would never have gotten to the cross if Joseph, um, Simon of Cyrene was not there. Jesus would never be buried in a virgin tomb 
if Joseph of Arimathea did not donate his tomb, have you learned something tonight? Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience with me. We're about to wrap up. Pray one prayer. Lord, now that I have heard these things, I obtain the grace. I obtain the grace to make these six quality decisions. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Please pray. I'm about to speak over your life. Pray. Is someone praying? For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Lord, my life is changing by the power of the decisions that I have learned to make. In the name of Jesus, I will never be small. I am rising from one level of grace to the other. I am rising from one level of victory to the other. One level of results to the other. Is someone praying? You are declaring this over your life. Indeed, this will be the year of the Lord for me. The manifestation of the power and the possibilities that are resident within the Christ. I receive this from God. Hallelujah. Please receive every prophetic word that I declare for you. We wrap up. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I pray that everyone here who is down spiritually, you started 2022 down in your prayer life, down in your word study life, your passion and your drive for the things of God. In the name of Jesus, I fan the fires of your spiritual life to flames now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the discipline it takes to stay and acquire superior knowledge that transits you mentally in the name that is above all names. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. I'm praying for you that anyone here who has the spirit of death hanging over them, hanging over their families by the blood of the eternal covenant, I decree and declare death is far from you, far from your children, far from your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray over your finances. I know many of you have seen the tides and from the signs that happen from all the economic indices it seems to be that the year may not be a pleasant one but was it not when darkness came upon Egypt that there was light in Goshen I decree and declare by the mystery of exemption the, and the power that raised Christ from the dead may this year be about your most prosperous year By the prophetic, I connect you to strategic destiny help us. In the name of Jesus, I knock on the gates of systems and structures and I command them to open for your sake. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Wherever the helpers of your destiny are, the men and women anointed by God to hold your hands as you rise to the next level. I prophesy that wherever they are, in Lagos here or across the 36 states of this nation, the continents of Africa, wherever they are, by prophecy, I connect them to you. 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 I prayed it in the mainland. Let me pray it here. There is a grace for speed. 
in the name that is above all names where you have been moving slow it looks like you are not making progress by the power that raised Christ from the dead may that grace come upon you to accelerate you may that grace come upon you to accelerate you one year in one month in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever has ignored you I call upon my God who is also your God in the name of Jesus Christ I place an unction on your life they will never be able to ignore you again hear me there are many of you here you have been part of the lifting of many people you were part of their success stories but they've forgotten about you I open the book of remembrance tonight and I decree and declare for your investments in the life of men corporations nations may you be remembered for good in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I end my voice with the man of God and the woman of God to speak over your life that everything that makes for your lifting and your excelling David Christian Center I pray for you the workers the the deacons all who are part of the workforce I decree and declare go from glory to glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ when men say there is a cast down I speak over you that you will say there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus Christ your wine and your corn and your oil will not famish in the name of Jesus Christ hear me anybody who fights you goes down instantly in the name of Jesus Christ let this be the year that you see the favor of God in unprecedented dimensions in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you may the Lord increase you in Jesus name hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.
Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone said, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear, and we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine, and you will forever be. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let me challenge someone, therefore, that this is the way you are going to buy books. There are videos you must watch if not your eyes will not see sleep. Discipline yourself. Tear down some negative pictures in your room that continue to spell evil and war and all of those kinds of things. I am very sensitive to atmosphere. There are things you will never find around me because there are multitudes that are depending on the decisions that I take. And it is my responsibility under God to create the atmosphere that makes creativity and growth possible for me. I invest in my atmosphere. Are you learning? You're staying with neighbors that are causing you trouble. At the end of this meeting, we'll release a grace for you to get out of that place and look for a place where you can, you can roll on the floor in peace and serve God. And anybody who comes under your roof and doesn't behave well, send them away in peace. Don't, don't say, well, the, the Bible says, no, 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 God is not stupid. There is a protocol. Don't bring somebody into your house who does not give you peace. The Bible says, the Lord himself will give you peace always, by all means. There are many believers who continue to trap themselves and they don't create that atmosphere that allows for creativity because they ship all kinds of troublemakers around their lives in the name of relatives, in the name of all kinds of people. You don't have to fight them. Let them go in peace. If you are under my roof, you must serve my God and subscribe to the modus operandi you met. You can't bring your rules into my house. No. Are we learning? The decision to contend for superior beliefs there are some of you your businesses should not be at that level except that you have not seen further because it is as far as your eyes can see that it is given to you not as far as it is available the one your eyes sees is what you are you are, you are given make up your mind that this is the year you will expand beyond the limitations of culture beyond the limitations don't say I am from so 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 no if you came from a poor family, do not bring a poor family out of you. If you came from a weak family, do not bring a weak family out of you. Be the bridge between the old and the new. I made up my mind it was a decision that every men mental construct I will need to have to allow me excel at a global level. God has done his part by calling me and anointing me and granting me access to the Holy Spirit. There is the labor dimension of faith as a commitment that you believe in what God has called you to do. If he has anointed me to speak to kings and to nations and to nobles, I must pay the price to build the mental capacity that befits that realm. Don't sit down and just wish and hope and wish and hope and wish and hope and then remain mediocre. No. Make up your mind that you will not be in any atmosphere on this earth and feel ashamed. No, it is a commitment. Businessman, that even if you stand before Bill Gates, you will only be inspired, not intimidated. No, no. 
the difference between you and anybody you admire is number one the level and quality of information they have number two the level of relationships that they have that supports that mental transition and then number three the level of increasing upon them everybody you at ad you admire you can even surpass if you are willing to make the decision to work on your mind your mind can go where your body is not yet qualified to go your mind does not need a visa your mind can travel with the holy spirit and tap into infinite possibilities i was preparing for ministry when i was in one room don't wait for anybody to come and invite you and bless you from where you are lift up your eyes you don't need a visa to lift up your eyes and now technology has made it easy with the comfort of your phone you can access materials that expand your thinking lay your hands on your head and declare expansion that this year my mind expand expand you are praying my mind expand in the name of jesus expand in ministry expand in business for the sake of his majesty a small and a mediocre life I'm not part of you again. I make a decision in the name of Jesus. Not a carnal decision. Not a sensual decision. A spiritual decision. The discipline to submit my mind to knowledge. The discipline to submit my mind to learning. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. In the name of Jesus. Local champion living. Be far from my life. I am ready to attain a global scale in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You see, if you don't rise to a global